the Indiana Pacers are one of the most under-the-radar young teams in the NBA. From trading for Tyrese Halliburton to drafting Ben Matherin in 2022 to selecting Jarese Walker, signing Bruce Brown, and trading for Obi Toppin in 2023, Indiana has quietly been building a strong young core. NBA fans could be in for a shock with this Pacers team next season, but even if they don't go for it right now, the Indiana Pacers should be a team to watch in the coming years. Starting off with one of the major shocks of free agency, the Pacers signing Bruce Brown to a two-year, $45 million deal. Now listen, there are many reasons for this seemingly absurd annual value, one being that Bruce Brown is an elite role player during a recent championship run, another being new CBA rules requiring teams to spend at least 90% of their cap space, which definitely impacts young teams with much of their centerpieces on rookie deals the most. And last up, listen, I mean no disrespect to my indie people, but the Pacers needed to offer an exorbitant amount to attract someone with widespread interest to a cold city square in the middle of the country. I really like this signing though, Bruce Brown is the exact kind of player really every team could use. Had this been a three or four year deal I may have a very different tone, but overpaying for an elite role player on a short term deal when your franchise cornerstones are mostly on cheaper deals and when you're trying to reestablish a culture is fine. The next move was one that I really, really love, a very low risk, high reward deal, which involved the Pacers sending two second rounders to New York for Obi Toppin. The high flyer and lottery pick never really got a fair shot to develop in starting or at least high bench minutes. This was due to him being behind Julius Randle and him being an older rookie who wasn't viewed as as much of a developmental piece as say a 19 year old. But Obi Toppin has shown flashes of being able to be a very good NBA player. In the 15 career games he's started, he has averaged 21, 6, and 3 on 58, 44, 84 splits. I think Obi will finally break out in Indiana, likely in a starting role. I think him and Tyrese Halliburton could be absolutely lethal in the pick and roll, especially with a stretch big in Miles Turner at the 5. Due to me seeing Obi Toppin as likely nothing less than a solid bench piece and very likely a quality starter, I really don't know how the Indiana Pacers can lose here. Even if he doesn't show what you'd hope in heavy minutes, a bench piece for two seconds isn't awful, but I think Obi has it and just hasn't had the chance to show it in a crowded front court in New York. Now to get on to Mr. Halliburton, who just secured a five-year, $260 million deal. This is a guy who I absolutely loved coming out of Iowa State and who I thought the Knicks should have selected over Obi Toppin, funnily enough, and I also wanted my Sixers to trade up to get him, but I was cool with us getting Tyrese Maxey at 21. I also wanted the Sixers to do the rumor deal centered around Halliburton, Buddy Heald, and Ben Simmons, but anyways, the 23-year-old made his first all-star team last season, averaging 21-4 and 10 on 62.4% true shooting. Despite his pretty nasty looking jump shot, Tyrese has shown potential as an elite shooter, shooting 40% from three last season on seven attempts a game. Halley's potential as a scorer, playmaker, and overall offensive engine is great. While the Pacers will need another star to become a true contender, which they hope they have in Benedict Matherin and or Jarese Walker, the Sabonis for Halliburton deal was an outstanding move to begin a rebuild with. Next up, we have Benedict Matherin, the Pacers selection with their sixth overall pick in 2022, who averaged 17, 4, and 2 in his rookie season. The young guard has shown great scoring flashes and appears to really have his head on straight in his approach to the game and understanding the work that will be necessary to get where he wants to go. You may know him from saying he's better than LeBron, and this statement he made around the draft shows the type of confidence that this young kid has. While Miles Turner is obviously an elite big man, I don't really feel like I need to get into what he does too much. You know, we, we, we all kind of know at this point he was drafted in 2015 but I also love guys like Buddy Heald and TJ McConnell but in all honesty I don't know if the Pacers roster looks like it does right now when the season starts but I could be wrong given the fact that they have already made a couple moves and hey I mean a depth chart of Halley, TJ McConnell, Ben Matherin, Buddy Heald, Bruce Brown, Aaron Neesmith, Obi Toppin, Jarese Walker, and Miles Turner slash Daniel Tice slash Jalen Smith feels like an outstanding blend of playmaking, scoring, versatility, shooting, and defense. This combined with a great coach in Rick Carlisle, I think is the perfect blend for a shocking regular season. While I don't want to say a seed number, I think if things go well, we could be having the Indiana Pacers in discussions with teams around the 5-8 to eight seed mark in the East. But regardless if they shock the world and win 50 games or just win around 40 and at least be in the play-in, I think this Pacers team is going to be one of the most fun young teams in our league and Indiana fans have a lot to be excited for. That's going to wrap this one up. If y'all could like the video, sub to the channel, turn on those noties. I would really, really appreciate it. Go check out my other content. 
and you know i mean comment any video ideas down below again i just uploaded a son's video this one should be coming next you know what i mean so you know again like y'all teams you know what i mean I, i've made a video about your team if i had you know i, I might have go, go you know what i mean go pete but if i haven't you know let me know like, like you know what i mean let me know let me know that's all i'm gonna say but yeah i'm out of here peace